In concurrent programming, a monitor is a synchronization construct that allows threads to have both mutual exclusion and the ability to wait for a certain condition to become true. Monitors also have a mechanism for signaling other threads that their condition has been met. A monitor consists of a mutex object and condition variables. A condition variable is basically a container of threads that are waiting on a certain condition. Monitors provide a mechanism for threads to temporarily give up exclusive access in order to wait for some condition to be met, before regaining exclusive access and resuming their task. Another definition of monitor is a thread safe class, object, or module that uses wrapped mutual exclusion in order to safely allow access to a method or variable by more than one thread. The defining characteristic of a monitor is that its methods are executed with mutual exclusion, at each point in time, at most one thread may be executing any of its methods. Using a condition variable, s, it can also provide the ability for threads to wait on a certain condition. For the rest of this article, this sense of monitor will be referred to as a thread-safe object module. Monitors were invented by C. A. R. Haw and Per Brinch Hansen, and were first implemented in Brinch Hansen's concurrent Pascal language. Mutual exclusion, as a simple example, consider a thread-safe object for performing transactions on a bank account. Monitor class account, private int balance, equals zero, invariant balance greater than or equal to zero. Public method boolean withdraw, int amount, precondition amount greater than or equal to zero, if balance equals zero, balance, equals balance plus amount. While a thread is executing a method of a thread safe object, it is said to occupy the object, by holding its mutex. Thread safe objects are implemented to enforce that at each point in time, at most one thread may occupy the object. The lock, which is initially unlocked, is locked at the start of each public method, and is unlocked at each return from each public method. Upon calling one of the methods, a thread must wait until no other thread is executing any of the thread safe object's methods before starting execution of its method. Note that without this mutual exclusion, in the present example, two threads could cause money to be lost or gained for no reason. For example, two threads withdrawing 1000 from the account could both return true while causing the balance to drop by only 1,000, as follows. First, both threads fetch the current balance, find it greater than 1,000, and subtract 1,000 from it. Then, both threads store the balance and return. The syntactic sugar monitor class in the above example is implementing the following basic representation of the code, by wrapping each function's execution in mutexes. Class account, private lock my lock. Private int balance, equals zero, invariant balance greater than or equal to zero. Public method boolean withdraw, int amount, precondition amount greater than or equal to zero, my lock acquire. Try, if balance equals zero, my lock acquire. Try, balance, equals balance plus amount, finally, my lock release. Condition variables, equals problem statement equals, for many applications, Mutual exclusion is not enough. Threads attempting an operation may need to wait until some condition holds true. A busy waiting loop. While not, do skip. Will not work, as mutual exclusion will prevent any other thread from entering the monitor to make the condition true. Other solutions exist such as having a loop that unlocks the monitor, waits a certain amount, locks the monitor and check for the condition P. Theoretically, it works and will not deadlock but issues arise. It's hard to decide an appropriate amount of waiting time too small and the thread will hog the CPU too big and it will be apparently unresponsive. What is needed is a way to signal the thread when the condition P is true. Equals case study, classic bounded producer consumer problem equals, a classic concurrency problem is that of the bounded producer consumer, in which there is a Q or ring buffer of tasks with a maximum size with one or more threads being producer threads that add tasks to the queue, and one or more other threads being consumer threads that take tasks out of the queue. The queue is assumed to be non-euro thread safe itself, and it can be empty, full, or between empty and full. Whenever the queue is full of tasks, then we need the producer threads to block until there is room from consumer threads decoding tasks. On the other hand, 
Whenever the queue is empty, then we need the consumer threads to block until more tasks are available due to producer threads adding them. As the queue is a concurrent object shared between threads, accesses to it must be made atomic, because the queue can be put into an inconsistent state during the course of the queue access that should never be exposed between threads. Thus, any code that accesses the queue constitutes a critical section that must be synchronized by mutual exclusion. If code and processor instructions in critical sections of code that access the queue could be interleaved by arbitrary context switches between threads on the same processor or by simultaneously running threads on multiple processors, then there is a risk of exposing inconsistent state and causing race conditions. Incorrect without synchronization, a Norvay approach is to design the code with busy waiting and no synchronization, making the code subject to race conditions. This code has a serious problem in that accesses to the queue can be interrupted and interleaved with other threads accesses to the queue. The queue anchor and queue decker methods likely have instructions to update the queue's member variables such as its size, beginning and ending positions, assignment and allocation of queue elements, etc. In addition, the queue is empty and queue is full methods read this shared state as well. If producer-consumer threads are allowed to be interleaved during the calls to anchor decker, then inconsistent state of the queue can be exposed leading to race conditions. In addition, if one consumer makes the queue empty in between another consumer's exiting the busy wait and calling decker, then the second consumer will attempt to decker from an empty queue leading to an error. Likewise, if a producer makes the queue full in between another producer's exiting the busy wait and calling anchor, then the second producer will attempt to add to a full queue leading to an error. Spin waiting, one Norvay approach to achieve synchronization, as alluded to above, is to use spin waiting, in which a mutex is used to protect the critical sections of code and busy waiting is still used, with the lock being acquired and released in between each busy wait check. This method assures that inconsistent state does not occur, but wastes CPU resources due to the unnecessary busy waiting. Even if the queue is empty and producer threads have nothing to add for a long time, consumer threads are always busy waiting unnecessarily. Likewise, even if consumers are blocked for a long time on processing their current tasks and the queue is full, producers are always busy waiting. This is a wasteful mechanism. What is needed is a way to make producer threads block until the queue is non-full, and a way to make consumer threads block until the queue is non-empty. NB mutexes themselves can also be spin locks which involve busy waiting in order to get the lock, but in order to solve this problem of wasted CPU resources, we assume that Q lock is not a spin lock and properly uses a blocking lock Q itself. Equals condition variables equals, the solution is condition variables. Conceptually a condition variable is a queue of threads, associated with a monitor, on which a thread may wait for some condition to become true. Thus each condition variable is associated with an assertion. While a thread is waiting on a condition variable, that thread is not considered to occupy the monitor, and so other threads may enter the monitor to change the monitor's state. In most types of monitors, these other threads may signal the condition variable to indicate that assertion is true in the current state. Thus there are two main operations on condition variables, wait C, M where C is a condition variable and M is a mutex associated with the monitor. This operation is called by a thread that needs to wait until the assertion is true before proceeding. While the thread is waiting, it does not occupy the monitor. The function, and fundamental contract, of the wait operation, is to do the following steps, 1, atomically. Release the mutex M, move this thread from the ready queue to C's wait queue of threads, and, sleep this thread. 2. Once this thread is subsequently notified signaled and resumed, then automatically reacquire the mutex M. Steps 1A and 1B can occur in either order, with 1C usually occurring after them. While the thread is sleeping and in C's wait queue, the next program counter to be executed is at step 2, in the middle of the wait function subroutine. Thus, the thread sleeps and later wakes up in the middle of the wait operation. The atomicity of the operations within step 1 is important to avoid race conditions that would be caused by a preemptive thread switch in between them. One failure mode that could occur if these were not atomic is a miswake up, 
in which the thread could be on C's sleep cue and have released the mutex, but a preemptive thread switch occurred before the thread went to sleep, and another thread called a signal notify operation on C moving the first thread back out of C's queue. As soon as the first thread in question is switched back to, its program counter will be at step 1C, and it will sleep and be unable to be woken up again, violating the invariant that it should have been on C's sleep queue when it slept. Other race conditions depend on the ordering of steps 1A and 1B, and depend on where a context switch occurs, signal C, also known as notify C, is called by a thread to indicate that the assertion is true. Depending on the type and implementation of the monitor, this moves one or more threads from C's sleep queue to the ready queue, or another queues for it to be executed. It is usually considered a best practice to perform the signal slash notify operation before releasing mutexm that is associated with C, but as long as the code is properly designed for concurrency and depending on the threading implementation, it is often also acceptable to release the lock before signaling. Depending on the threading implementation, the ordering of this can have scheduling priority ramifications. A threading implementation should document any special constraints on this ordering. Broadcast C, also known as Notify All C, is a similar operation that wakes up all threads in C's wait queue. This empties the wait queue. Generally, when more than one predicate condition is associated with the same condition variable, the application will require broadcast instead of signal because a thread waiting for the wrong condition might be woken up and then immediately go back to sleep without waking up a thread waiting for the correct condition that just became true. Otherwise, if the predicate condition is one to one with the condition variable associated with it, then signal may be more efficient than broadcast. As a design rule, multiple condition variables can be associated with the same mutex, but not vice versa. This is because the predicate is the same for all threads using the monitor and must be protected with mutual exclusion from all other threads that might cause the condition to be changed or that might read it while the thread in question causes it to be changed, but there may be different threads that want to wait for a different condition on the same variable requiring the same mutex to be used. In the producer-consumer example described above, the queue must be protected by a unique mutex object, M. The producer threads will want to wait on a monitor using lock M and a condition variable which blocks until the queue is non-full. The consumer threads will want to wait on a different monitor using the same mutex M but a different condition variable which blocks until the queue is non-empty. It would never make sense to have different mutexes for the same condition variable, but this classic example shows why it often certainly makes sense to have multiple condition variables using the same mutex. A mutex used by one or more condition variables may also be shared with code that does not use condition variables, if those critical sections do not happen to require waiting for a certain condition on the concurrent data. Equals monitor usage equals, the proper basic usage of a monitor is. To be more precise, this is the same pseudocode but with more verbose comments to better explain what is going on. Solving the bounded producer-consumer problem. Having introduced the usage of condition variables, let's use it to revisit and solve the classic bounded producer-consumer problem. The classic solution is to use two monitors, comprising two condition variables sharing one lock on the queue. This ensures concurrency between the producer and consumer threads sharing the task queue, and blocks the threads that have nothing to do rather than busy waiting as shown in the aforementioned approach using spin locks. A variant of this solution could use a single condition variable for both producers and consumers, perhaps named Q full or empty CV, or Q size changed CV. In this case, more than one condition is associated with a condition variable, such that the condition variable represents a weaker condition than the conditions being checked by individual threads. The condition variable represents threads that are waiting for the Q to be non full and ones waiting for it to be non empty. However, doing this would require using notify all in all the threads using the condition variable and cannot use a regular signal. This is because the regular signal might wake up a thread of the wrong type whose condition has not yet been met, and that thread would go back to sleep without a thread of the correct type getting signaled. For example, a producer might make the queue full and wake up another producer instead of a consumer, and the woken producer would go back to sleep. In the complementary case, 
a consumer might make the queue empty and wake up another consumer instead of a producer, and the consumer would go back to sleep. Using Notify All ensures that some thread of the right type will proceed as expected by the problem statement. Here is the variant using only one condition variable and Notify All. Equals synchronization primitives equals, implementing mutexes and condition variables requires some kind of synchronization primitive provided by hardware support that provides atomicity. Locks and condition variables are higher level abstractions over these synchronization primitives. On a uniprocessor, disabling and enabling interrupts is a way to implement monitors by preventing context switches during the critical sections of the locks and condition variables, but this is not enough on a multiprocessor. On a multiprocessor, usually special atomic read modify write instructions on the memory such as test and set, compare and swap, etc. are used, depending on what the ISA provides. These usually require deferring to spin locking for the internal lock state itself, but this locking is very brief. Depending on the implementation, the atomic read modify write instructions may lock the bus from other cores accesses and or prevent reordering of instructions in the CPU. Here is an example pseudocode implementation of parts of a threading system and mutexes and maze style condition variables, using test and set and a first come, first served policy. This glosses over most of how a threading system works, but shows the parts relevant to mutexes and condition variables. Sample MESA monitor implementation with test and set. Equals semaphore equals, as an example, consider a thread safe class that implements a semaphore. There are methods to increment and to decrement a private integer s. However, the integer must never be decremented below zero. Thus a thread that tries to decrement must wait until the integer is positive. We use a condition variable s is positive with an associated assertion of monitor class semaphore, private int s, equals zero, invariant s greater than or equal to zero, private condition s is positive slash associated with s greater than zero slash, public method p, while s equals zero, wait s is positive, assert s greater than zero, s, equals s, one, public method v, s, equals s plus one, assert s greater than zero, signal s is positive, Implemented showing all synchronization. Class semaphore, private volatile int s, equals zero, invariant s greater than or equal to zero, private condition variable s is positive slash associated with s greater than zero slash, private mutex my lock slash lock on s slash. Public method p, my lock acquire, while s equals zero, wait, my lock, s is positive, assert s greater than zero, s equals s, 1, my lock release. Public method v, my lock acquire, s, equals s plus 1, assert s greater than 0, signal s is positive, my lock release. Monitor implemented using semaphores, conversely, locks and condition variables can also be derived from semaphores, thus making monitors and semaphores reducible to one another. When a signal happens on a condition variable that at least one other thread is waiting on, there are at least two threads that could then occupy the monitor, the thread that signals and any one of the threads that is waiting. In order that at most one thread occupies the monitor at each time, a choice must be made. Two schools of thought exist on how best to resolve this choice. This leads to two kinds of condition variables which will be examined next, blocking condition variables give priority to a signaled thread. Non-blocking condition variables give priority to the signaling thread equals blocking condition variables equals, the original proposals by C. A. Ahor and Perbrinch Hansen were for blocking condition variables. With a blocking condition variable, the signaling thread must wait outside the monitor until the signaled thread relinquishes occupancy of the monitor by either returning or by again waiting on a condition variable. Monitors using blocking condition variables are often called hostile monitors or signal and urgent wait monitors. We assume there are two queues of threads associated with each monitor object, E is the entrance queue, S is a queue of threads that have signaled. In addition we assume that for each condition variable, there is a queue, Q, which is a queue for threads waiting on condition variable, all queues are typically guaranteed to be fair and, in some implementations, 
may be guaranteed to be first in first out. The implementation of each operation is as follows. Enter the monitor, enter the method, if the monitor is locked, add this thread to E, block this thread, else, lock the monitor. Leave the monitor, schedule, return from the method. Wait, add this thread to Q, schedule, block this thread. Signal, if there is a thread waiting on Q, select and remove one such thread T from Q. Add this thread to S, restart T. Block this thread. Schedule, if there is a thread on S, select and remove one thread from S and restart it. Else if there is a thread on E, select and remove one thread from E and restart it. Else, unlock the monitor. The schedule routine selects the next thread to occupy the monitor or, in the absence of any candidate threads, unlocks the monitor. The resulting signaling discipline is known as signal and urgent wait, as the signaler must wait, but is given priority over threads on the entrance queue. An alternative is signal and wait, in which there is no S queue and signaler waits on the E queue instead. Some implementations provide a signal and return operation that combines signaling with returning from a procedure. Signal and return, if there is a thread waiting on queue, select and remove one such thread T from queue. Restart T. Else, schedule, return from the method. In either case, when a condition variable is signaled and there is at least one thread on waiting on the condition variable, the signaling thread hands occupancy over to the signaled thread seamlessly, so that no other thread can gain occupancy in between. If is true at the start of each signal operation, it will be true at the end of each wait operation. This is summarized by the following contracts. In these contracts, is the monitor's invariant. Enter the monitor, post condition. Leave the monitor, precondition. Wait, precondition, modifies the state of the monitor. Post condition and signal, precondition and modifies the state of the monitor. Post condition signal and return, precondition and in these contracts, it is assumed that and do not depend on the contents or lengths of any queues. When the condition variable can be queried as to the number of threads waiting on its queue, more sophisticated contracts can be given. For example, a useful pair of contracts allowing occupancy to be passed without establishing the invariant, is wait, precondition, modifies the state of the monitor, post condition, signal, precondition and, or and, modifies the state of the monitor, post condition, see Howard and Bure Al, for more. It is important to note here that the assertion is entirely up to the programmer. He or she simply needs to be consistent about what it is. We conclude this section with an example of a thread safe class using a blocking monitor that implements a bounded, thread safe stack. Monitor class shared stack, private const capacity, equals 10, private int, capacity a, private int size, equals 0, invariant 0 equals 0, private non blocking condition balance may be big enough. Public method withdraw, int amount, precondition amount greater than or equal to 0. While balance equals amount, balance equals balance, amount. Public method deposit, int amount, precondition amount greater than or equal to zero, balance equals balance plus amount, notify all balance may be big enough. In this example, the condition being waited for is a function of the amount to be withdrawn, so it is impossible for a depositing thread to know that it made such a condition true. It makes sense in this case to allow each waiting thread into the monitor to check if its assertion is true. Equals implicit condition variable monitors equals. In the Java language, each object may be used as a monitor. Methods requiring mutual exclusion must be explicitly marked with a synchronized keyword. Blocks of code may also be marked by synchronized. Rather than having explicit condition variables, each monitor is equipped with a single wait queue in addition to its entrance queue. All waiting is done on this single wait queue and all notify and notify all operations aptly to this queue. This approach has been adopted in other languages, for example C. Equals implicit signaling equals, another approach to signaling is to omit the signal operation. 
Whenever a thread leaves the monitor the assertions of all waiting threads are evaluated until one is found to be true. In such a system, condition variables are not needed, but the assertions must be explicitly coded. The contract for wait is. Wait, precondition, modifies the state of the monitor, postcondition and. History, C. A. Ahor and Perbrinch Hansen developed the idea of monitors around 1972, based on earlier ideas of their own and of E. W. Dijkstra. Brinch Hansen was the first to implement monitors. Hoare developed the theoretical framework and demonstrated their equivalence to semaphores. Monitors were soon used to structure inter-process communication in the solo operating system. Programming languages that have supported monitors include, ADA since ADA 95, C, C++ since C++ 11, Concurrent Euclid, Concurrent Pascal, D, Delphi, Java, Mesa, Modular 3, Python, Ruby, Squeak Small Talk, Turing, Turing Plus, and Object-Oriented Turing, a Micron C++. A number of libraries have been written that allow monitors to be constructed in languages that do not support them natively. When library calls are used, it is up to the programmer to explicitly mark the start and end of code executed with mutual exclusion. Threads is one such library. See also, mutual exclusion, communicating sequential processes, a later development of monitors by C. A. A. Hall, Semaphore. Notes. Further reading, monitors, an operating system structuring concept, C. A. A. Hall A. Euro Communications of the ACM, V17 N10, pages 549 to 557, October 1974, 1. Monitor classification P. A. Boo, M. Fortier, M. H. Coffin A Euro ACM Computing Surveys, 1995, 2. External links Java Monitors, Monitors, an Operating System Structuring Concept by C. A. A. Hall, Signaling in Monitors by John H. Howard, Proving Monitors by John H. Howard, Experience with Processes and Monitors in Mesa by Butler W. Lampson and David D. Rodell. Thread condition wait a euro description from the open group based specifications issue 6, IEEE STD 1003.1, block on a condition variable by Dave Marshall, strategies for implementing POSIX condition variables on Win32 by Douglas C. Schmidt and Irfan Pirali, condition variable routines from the Apache Portable Runtime Library, WX condition description. Boost condition variables reference. Thread Condition Class Reference, WEFT's Condition Class Reference, ACE Condition Class Template Reference, Quate Condition Class Reference, Common C++ Conditional Class Reference, at Conditional Mutex Class Reference, Threads Shared a Euro Perl Extension for Sharing Data Structures Between Threads, HTTP, MSDN Microsoft Com Library MISX 82052, Versus 85, ASPX. Monitors in Visual Prologue